Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and while I was at TFCon Chicago 2014, I was surprised to see an entirely new toy just show up as a variant. This is Toy World's Grant, the paintless and grander sibling to their upcoming Infinitor release. He came in some boring cardboard and decadent styrofoam along with a big sheet of decals. A sheet that I and many others thought was uncut. Thanks to T2RX6, I learned it's actually a form of rub-on decal, with a clear sheet over top of the stickers themselves, which you'll want to carefully cut and use to apply them before peeling it away and chucking it in the trash. You can also peel them out from underneath if you don't want to do any cutting, but I find the idea of that much more risky. This is an interesting approach, which has definitely provided extremely strong adhesive bonds with the downside of much thinner and rippable stickers. Also, my copy of Grant was entirely missing sticker number 10 on the sheet. TF Source is sorting me out, though. There are two stickers on the sheet whose numbers and locations are kind of left out of the instructions, which have a weird setup of no numbers on the sheet, but a numbered diagram on the placement guide sheet. A placement guide that's printed entirely in over-darkened black and white with some tiny pictures. Basically, this whole sticker thing could have been done better, but I think the end result is worth the toil. Tiny Grant is the standard Toy World Headmaster Fair, with a decent mini-robot sculpt on the front and a blatant and unhidden giant face on the back. He's got the usual somewhat loose ball joint posability found on his Toy World predecessors, featuring the elbow joint that was added to Swamper. Also, even if his missing crotch sticker were there, this little guy is begging for paint. The Grant variant has ditched all paint apps in lieu of its sticker sheet, and this little head fella is the one who suffers for it the most. His isolated forms, chest and head, are a painful sea of unpainted light gray, and when he's turned into his cranial alt mode, man, man, do I wish his face was cast in the darker sea gray plastic found elsewhere on this toy. Without any paint, the illusion of a Maximus helmet is obliterated, even with the three detailed decals trying to pick out the forehead and horns. And it's a weird gray, I don't know if I can easily paint match it what with my layman's games workshop knowledge of putting paint on models. Anyway, slamming Tiny Grant into the Grand Grant body reveals a cool throwback stat readout gimmick mounted on an internal cylinder that turns as the robot looks left and right. That is pretty cool, and properly compatible with a bevy of other headmasters and headmaster alikes. Grand Grant's sculpt, silhouette, and plastic colors are all hugely derivative of the G1 Maximus toy, to the point of erasing a lot of Toy World's own design identity from the piece. At a glance, this looks like a downsized 80s toy with tweaked posability. He's a bit more than that, but Grant here is ridiculously slavish in his robot mode alone, and it's only going to get slavish... er... from here. However, the slavishosity dissipates for a moment, as Grant's one and only weapon is this laser rifle. There's no double-barreled gun, and most depressingly, no sword. I can't believe opposable Maximus is showing up without any kind of melee weapon. He is, however, bearing a pair of pectoral compartments that kind of look like chairs? I guess Grant's a believer in always being prepared, as he can walk around with two more friends in tow, headmaster or otherwise. I can't explain why, but I'm really into these internal shoulder seats. The slavishnicity returns in full force, as the classic Maximus all-guns-out maneuver is 95% here in all its cannon-leveling glory. The only missing pieces are the knuckle guns, and at this scale, I can entirely forgive that. Because man, to have a guns-out Maximus that's posable to boot? That is some fun stuff, and it means he's shooting in a much wider arc than kind of 45 degrees forward. He can shoot sideways now. It's the moment you've been waiting for! It's a size comparison of Grant with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So anyway, this guy's posability uh, at first glance looks like it could be a whole lot of G1 brickitude, and uh, it's not. But we're going to start off with the part that does not prove that, which is you've already seen that you can move his head around can't look up really you can wiggle it up but that's just sort of you know springy and temporary it's not quite what you're hoping for however over here we've got g1 fort max arm joint here's some of the new stuff get ready for this this is kind of noisy in the way that i like oh goes out about that far uh, there's also a bicep swivel. There is an elbow joint here with a bit of a soft ratchet. And then if you need to elbow him some more, there's another elbow joint right there. So it is a double jointed elbow. 
There's a real tiny little thing down there holding it all together. Uh, his wrists can swivel and his knuckles can open. Hooray! Uh, also, anything he's holding, the uh, the channel for uh, you know the, the peg to go in is all here separate from the hand. So anything he's gripping generally does not actually involve these fingers, which I really like. I hate it when the actual fingers are part of the gripping process when you know there's no tabs or anything involved. Uh, down here, his waist has got a clickety-click, very soft detented swivel, and then his hips make all kinds of noise. You have four clicks up. And had you know probably four back as well, and then uh, outwardsly they can do this, and the vibration of this clicking causes this flap to come loose. And that's kind of a bummer because if you hold it shut, this thing actually can come up all the way, and you know the flap is inside here. But if you do this you know normally, there's a chance it could pop up just enough to get a little bit caught. But uh, it's not really that big a deal. The thighs just free wheel and swivel. The knees got one big chunky hinge, and it's also oh satisfying to see a Fort Max be able to do this kind of stuff. Uh, his feet do the transformation joint, but then ankle tilt. Yo, it's like a totally dislocating ankle tilt, but whatever. It's an ankle tilt in a Fort Max. You can get this guy to actually pose and stand flat footed, like doing stuff, and it's a totally G1 Fort Max body. That's kind of cool. Uh, also, like G1 Fort Max, this dude transforms super simple. Uh, and there's some things I want to comment on that involve transformation, so to get into his simplest mode, I must do that live. One other thing to be aware of, though, when you're moving all these ratchet joints and causing vibrations through his body, there's, there's one aspect that does not like it very much. See this thing that just sort of flapped open here? That's annoying, that happens a lot. Also, when you're swiveling stuff around, it's pretty easy to unseat the peg that this whole chunk is on and have this thing start wiggling around, freewheeling like. I thicken the pegs that these plug in with, and I don't. I, I think I need to thicken them again. Uh, it's all a little bit haphazard back here, but uh, when you're turning this guy into a battleship, it's like the simplest transformation. I want to talk about one thing I really like, which is like the single greatest. Uh, improvement one could make on the original Fort Max, and that is to have the friggin' hands fold away. Hooray! That feels so good to not have giant hands sticking off of every single one of his modes. Uh, I dig it. Uh, now, the reason why there's all this movable stuff back here is because unlike the original where, you know, the cockpit chunks would just be chilling out over there, these actually transform up a bit to plug into his, uh, his shoulder blades. That means that they transform down a bit, too, before, you know, the big swing happens. And this is where there's something real fragile that you gotta know about. Uh, I think this is probably the biggest oversight on the toy, because it's just too damn fragile. All this stuff comes together here, right? There is the tiniest of little pegs right here on the cockpit window. Uh, that little peg right yonder. And uh, it's tiny. It's made of a clear plastic, and the hole it goes into over here is way too thin for it. It's not like too thin such that they can't go in, but I would highly recommend getting like a round file or an exacto or something, just taking a little grind job in there just to microscopically widen that hole a little bit. And also, when you are putting this together, do the clear bit separately and carefully by itself. Similarly, when you're pulling this apart, do not grab hold and yank because. That peg will just stay in the peg hole, and then this cockpit will forever open in two halves, and you'll feel really sad. Or you broke your friend's toy, one or the other. Uh, what I would recommend is to just start off by easing apart this uh, this upper cockpit bit here, because uh, it's kind of it's not that hard to get apart, but you can you can understand right how this could really easily be broken. With, uh, without really realizing that you're brooding it, and then you can just get the rest of it apart like that. So, yeah, be aware of that. That That is the fragile part of this entire toy, in my opinion. And I don't want you to be sad with broken pegs, you know. Just, just take some care and be aware. One of the other cool things this guy does, and this is an example of some of the uh, enhancements to engineering. Well, I say one of the other, like, you know, having a breaking peg is a, is a cool thing he can do. The battleship mode of Fort Max, or any Maximus, is generally like this. You got his legs sort of sticking out down here with his feet flattened down. 
So uh, what this thing does to add just a little extra step is that these flaps I was talking about, they fold out and click into a couple of slots uh, right here on his flanks. And I think that's kind of cool because it means that now you've got a dead solid battleship mode. Legs will not sag whatsoever. It, maybe it's overdoing it a bit, what with these also already being on ratchets, but hey, whatever. There's one other thing I'm going to tell you about before we move back on to being, uh, you know, panning shots and pretty stuff. These shoulder blocks are separate pieces. Nothing in the instructions ever uses these things as rotating blocks. All of these, this guy's modes uh, can have those rotated. In this mode, there is just enough room for them to squeeze over these flaps. Uh, they pop, they're kind of bent out a little bit on the joint, but not too badly. And they do like kind of click into place when you do this. Yeah, like, yeah, right there. So these shoulder blocks allow for, you know, this whole section to move up a bit tighter into the tower area. Uh, I wouldn't do that in battleship mode because there's, there's wheels and you're ruining their effect. But you'll see in at least, you know, one or or two other modes, a way that these things could be used. Anyway, the instructions do not make any mention of these rotating shoulder blocks, but they're there, and uh, you can kind of use them at your discretion. Anyway, let's talk about this battleship. Despite a couple of engineering tweaks, the Battleship Grant doesn't do much that you haven't already seen on a G1 Maximus, outside of being a hell of a lot easier to fly around the room. I am super duper into the hiding of his hands, though. There are some wheels on the bottom to roll them on the ground, too, though mine came missing one. TF Source is sorting me out with that. But hey, at this scale, you can have him fly around with other airborne transforming robots and realize how silly he looks while doing so. Whoosh. Moving on. The transformation into city mode is just as familiar as the one before, although this is a place where I don't mind trying out those mysterious shoulder block rotations in order to tighten up the overall shape and make them look a bit more solidly sedentary. By the way, if you want to fold down the staircase or flip out the central ramp, I hope you brought a flathead tool along with you, as they are otherwise way too tight and ungraspable for simple fingernail leverage. Like, your fingernail's probably gonna come out before the toy part comes out, and that's gonna be a big, ugly mess. Looking at the micro-metropolis of Grant City, one can see the most deviations this toy makes from its source material. The city only has three ramps, as even if you rotate those shoulder blocks back into the original position, they don't unfurl into a fourth ramp or turn into a slot for Cerebro's insertion action. All that said, I don't really care about those omissions, and anyone complaining that the little elevator gimmick isn't present is legit crazy. It won't fit, I'm sorry. There is, however, the question of what this mode would actually be for. I kind of take it as a temporary staging area built to weather a storm and allow Grant to direct a squadron of allies into battle. Otherwise, it's kind of like a tiny city the size of a person, and that's sort of silly. The minicar launching gimmick is present on both outer ramps, though its effectiveness may leave plenty to be desired. They are not free sliding, there's a lot of friction there. Anyway, there is one more mode in here, original and devised by the folks at Toy World. Like, it's in the instructions. Basically, you've got to swivel just about every joint from the hips down. There are also some guiding tabs to connect Grant's ankles to his shoulders, though they don't really connect so much as suggest a position. Anyway, check it out! It's another base mode! This one's flatter and obviously built to shoot more stuff more often. It's not a bad idea, but I don't know, I kinda wish it did more. This feels incredibly fan modey, right down to Grant's legs being at a slightly canted angle due to the placement of the ratchet gaps in his hip joints. You can open up the two shoulder block doors, kinda, in order to add a bit more of a forward assault bunker imagery to the mode. I also swapped one of the ramps to a foot heel position and took one of the arms and folded them up, deployed the cannon. It's a bit of a variable mode, you can play around with it if you want. It's neat, it just needs more. And that's kind of this toy in a nutshell. Grant or his painted and fortressed sibling, the Infinitor, are a downsized and engineering upgraded G1 Maximus toy, and that's about it. I am rather baffled by several core design decisions, and even a few less valuable ones, like including this guy in the HO numbers numbers naming scheme of all the other Toy World Headmaster guys. This looks more like an intriguing knockoff than an independent design, and comes off looking a little weird when seated next to many other figures. Even other Toy World releases. 
The only thing that brings this together is the idea that it's Grand Maximus, the smallest Maximus of them all. So, why is he the limited run exclusive? Why is he completely unpainted? He almost gets away with that until I look at his head, the solitary part that puts a big crack into the overall presentation of the figure. This is a confusing toy that has been made in a way that seems to actively hide the design identity of its own manufacturer, barring the Headmaster Minibot. But it is also a solid toy, surprisingly heavy and dense, with sexy ratchet joints all up its wazoo, and only a handful of build quality issues mostly coming down to the cockpit window peg and the enormous difficulty in deploying the central ramp and side staircase for city mode. This figure's a lot of fun to mess with in robot mode, and chuckleably transformable into a battleship or modular emplacement without any of the alt modes overstaying their welcome. It's just a weird toy with a charm that'll hit you if it's meant for you as soon as you mess around with one in person. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I love the idea of a giant robot being named Grant. Almost as much as I love the idea of a giant robot named Grant having a brother named Infinitor.